you know, when we started 33 years ago, teaching pranayama, yoga, meditation and all, world over, there was so much prejudice. We had to face so many oppositions. People thought it is something of the devil and anything coming from the East, they had a lot of prejudice. They thought yoga or yogi means one who is standing on the nails or have ashes all over the body with a very lean body and having a lot of matted hair. This was the picture that people would get in their mind when we talk about yoga. I mean, it was, uh, it was a very difficult job to break the prejudice. Of course, Paramahamsa Yoganandaji and then Sri Maharshi Mahesh Yogiji did a lot to change the world from the drug and hippie culture to yoga adherent. Quote and could normal people would not do yoga. It must be someone freak, someone who is not normal uh, is considered to be doing yoga and meditation and going to India. This sort of this was the impression in the 80s. And that's why when we call our program Art of Living, so it, we didn't mention it's yoga or pranayama, meditation. And that somehow appealed to people. It's just a way of living. A way to find more happiness in life. That sort of, uh, you know, barrier which was in their mind started loosening up. Over the years, when young people started taking meditation, yoga, and these practices, today the scenario is different. Today, in the biggest stadium of Europe, in the Olympic Stadium, when thousands of people gather together and do yoga, the world stood up and they, they recognized the benefit of it. You know, similarly, there are yoga clubs all over now, meditation. Again, yoga doesn't mean only just asanas. Yoga is a lifestyle. Yoga is that which keeps your body free from disease, your mind free from confusion, intellect free from inhibition, and memory free from trauma. A general well-being is generated by doing these practices. You know, without a state recognition or state support, no knowledge can flourish or sustain itself. Even for sports, there is state support. For soccer, for cricket, for tick, for example, any game, the country stands behind that. But for yoga, this was not the case. Yoga was like an orphan. Nobody to own, nobody to, you know, certify and nobody to spread the message of the goodness that yoga does to us. I am glad that our Prime Minister Narendra Modi had proposed for a yoga day. That and, and just imagine, the longest day, the 21st of June, has been declared as the World Yoga Day. I'm happy and I congratulate the United Nations and all its 177 members who have supported this initiative. See, it's through yoga we can create able citizens, peaceful citizens. We can put an end to the violence that's happening in the world all over. You know, and yoga is uh, that which unites people across religion, race, nationality. I like to congratulate our teachers in 152 countries who have struggled hard to keep the knowledge alive, um, again, working against all odds and prejudice in the world. And today, their hard work has come to fruition. And I once again uh, congratulate and thank our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, who has rightly given the much needed state patronage or recognition for this ancient, ancient wisdom. Thank you. Jai